Thank you. Thank you so much. It's, let me first congratulate truly all the finalists for the National Book Awards. I was here indeed six years ago. And that was one of the most memorable nights of my life. Less about what happened to me and more so what I witnessed. I witnessed the late Congressman John Lewis uh, win a National Book Award. And in his victory speech, he talked about how when he was growing up in segregated Alabama, he was not allowed to attend and to go to his local library. And he talked about and started tearing up about his journey, the journey of a boy who couldn't even go to the library, to a man and an icon who won the National Book Award. I was also here with my six-month-old daughter at the time, uh, Imani, and now she's six years old. <laughs> and recently, she came home, she just started first grade, and expressed that she didn't like first grade. <laughs> I'm just done with first grade. And, but then a week later, she came home excited about being in first grade. And we asked her, why? Like, why are you so excited now? Um, and she told us it's because she now, because she's a first grader, she has the ability to check out books from the library. And, and so th these are just two of the many reasons why it is such an honor and pleasure for me to present the Literarian Award to the 10th Executive Director of the American Library Association, Tracy D. Hall. She, Tracy is the first black woman to lead the ALA. Her career of outstanding service to the American literary community is extensive and remarkable. Before leading the ALA, she was the cultural program director at the Joyce Foundation. She was the deputy commissioner of Chicago's Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events, the vice president of strategy and organizational development at the Queens Public Library, where during her tenure, she founded the NYC Early Learning Network. She's a community librarian at the Hartford Public Library, where her work was so influential that the then mayor of Hartford, Eddie Perez, designated February 13th Tracy Hall Day. And, and, and that's just a small sample, but, but what I want to bring to your attention is, is the challenge that Tracy issued to librarians, library professionals, and library supporters in June of 2020, when people were demonstrating all over this country. This was four months after becoming the ALA's executive director. Hall called for building a library workforce that reflects the diversity of the nation universal digital access and a much deeper financial commitment to, library, to libraries. And she said, through these three priorities, let our legacy be justice. When I say, let our legacy be justice, she said, I am inviting us to explore the construct of the library as both the vehicle and the driver of justice as both a means to justice and an arbiter. Hall was talking to librarians, but really she was talking to us all. The American literary community in this era of book banning, of 
the forces of injustice taking the books out of our hands, of tyrants taking away our right to read. As Hall instructs all of us, let our legacy be justice. The literary community as a whole must be a vehicle and driver of justice. And thank you, Tracy, for leading the way. And, and I must say, thank you, I must thank, actually, your grandmother, Bessie Marie Sanders Scott, for leading you where, like a young John Lewis, she couldn't go in segregated Louisiana, that hollowed space in her mind, and now your mind, the library. Her legacy was justice. Your ancestral legacy is justice. And so I'm delighted to present to you, Tracy D. Hall, the Literary Award for Outstanding Service to us, the American Libra Literary Community. <laughs> Come on, 103rd Street. <laughs> that's a shout out to, that's a shout out to Watts. I want to thank the National Book Foundation and those who saw something in my work that has resulted in the bestowal of this award tonight. And I want to thank all of my friends and family and those who are co-conspirators in this work of justice, those who have come here with me tonight. <clears throat> Moments like these are not intended to shine a spotlight on one individual, but rather to hold up a mirror that reflects all of the people and places that have contributed to what an individual has become. Tonight is a reflection of two groups of people that have lit a lifelong fire within me. People who long to read and people who fight for the right to read. Two groups that deserve to be seen and supported in this moment when the very act of reading, something which is a liberatory act, an act of agency and self-realization is being politicized and weaponized to the point that contemporary acts of censorship have surpassed that of the McCarthy era and books themselves have become contraband. But one of the central laws of information that we learn in library school the first day is that information wants to be free. So the irony is that in a period when books and reading are being scrutinized, over 43 million adults in the United States cannot read above a third grade level. In some urban and rural communities, that figure jumps to as much as two out of five adults. I dedicate this award to my grandmother, Bessie, one of the adults who live with low literacy, who got me my first library card, and who, at nearly 70 years old, walked me to the little yellow library in Watts that felt like a cathedral to me and would, though normally measured about everything else, allow me to check out as many books as the two of us could carry. For her, 
someone who had grown up in the segregated South, which also meant limited schooling and segregated libraries or none at all. For her, that her granddaughter could literally grow up in the library must have been an act of reparation. And I want to thank, I want to thank my brother, Scott, who is here tonight. He took up the walks to the library when my grandmother no longer could. It is because of both of them that I am standing here tonight. This award goes out to our grandmothers and grandfathers, our neighbors and our friends, and all adults who long to read and to discover the freedom that comes from navigating the world as a reader. And I dedicate this award to my fellow librarians. The tireless school librarians, the public librarians, the college librarians, the tribal librarians, the librarians at HBCUs, the prison librarians who fight for the right to read every day. And who in resisting censorship efforts have sacrificed their jobs and livelihoods to ensure that every reader, every reader, has a chance to see themselves represented on a bookshelf and their lived experiences validated. Let history show of this period that librarians and the writers who works they protect from being removed or erased were on the front lines in upholding our democracy. And finally, I dedicate this award to the tens of thousands of library and information professionals and committed staff that make up the American Library Association. It was a scholarship to attend library school from ALA that allowed me to turn my passion for literacy and information access into a quest that has steered my life. I will forever work to pay that investment in me forward. Inevitably, when you tell someone you are a librarian, they comment, you must really love to read. <laughs> Surely, loving reading is a prerequisite, but loving reading is not what makes you a librarian. What makes one a librarian is when you begin to truly understand that our democracy depends on people having the opportunity to think and write and read and share their stories openly. What makes one a librarian is that once you witness a transformation that occurs when someone comes across a book or a resource that truly flips on a switch in their lives and changes their lives, after that, you want everyone to have that same opportunity and you are willing to fight for it. It is a universal truth that one of the real tests of liberty is the right to read. Please, please stand against this effort to limit access to reading. I invite you to join the American Library Association and join me in the fight against book bans. Remember, free people read freely.